Hey, welcome to another episode of the You Only Live Once Life and Business Innovation Style Meditations, Yummy Conversations, where I, honey, bring you yummy conversations so that you can succeed yummily in your body and not sacrifice your integrity and who you are for the success that you're looking for. Today's topic is on the top seven mistakes that I see why passion driven entrepreneurs fail. And the secret, it's not about to the market. It's not about the outside. A lot of it is on the inside. So Tony Robbins said that success is 80% psychology and 20% skill. And the biggest challenge is that as first time entrepreneurs or sometimes even multiple time entrepreneurs, one of the biggest things is that The challenges that you're facing can be easily solved if you could access the part of you that can stay calm and find solution and resources during that time. Anyway, I will tell you what the first one is. So the first thing as you're going successful people like you as you're going on your entrepreneurial journey, especially if it's the first time or sometimes even the time again, is the clarity of vision. So especially if you're doing something that's mission driven, you know that you want to feel that excitement so that something draws towards you. However, it's very challenging to oftentimes see what exactly clearly that looks like. So I know a beautiful, wonderful entrepreneur she has worked 20 years or had a website for 20 years and did amazingly and is now on the way of discovering her next thing and she is she is waiting for that excitement waiting for that business idea to land where she feels most excited about and i also know a lot of people have ideas that i've spoken to clients as well as potential clients as well as people in our community that are looking at ideas that they've been sitting on in the back minute for a long time and without knowing specifically the reason behind the reason and how the dream ties into your personal values as well as where you see the world go and how that aligns with your commitments as well as what lights you up and what you can serve of value and who your audience and people you support are, it's very unlikely that you're going to have enough motivation or drive to go towards that. So that specificity is important as well as the alignment to it. And what I mean by that is a process in which we call the you only live once commitments, the thing that lights you up, the thing that gets you out of bed, and that there are three different values or commitments that are intrinsic to your motivation that you have not changed in the last, ever since you were less than five, that are still existing today. And those things need to be known for you to be able to return to whenever you are making decisions, especially in terms of your vision and how your vision manifests and how your vision and mission align. So that's the first thing, having clarity of what your passion actually means will make it energetically efficient. There is a poster that shows that. And so the top one with the heart right up there is that vision and is that commitment. So if you want to check that out for yourself and know a little bit more, you can check that out on yoloabundance.com slash free PDF. The second thing is strategy. So a lot of times when you're looking at your mission driven product or your mission driven service, you're looking at other business models that allow that to come true. Or if you're doing a nonprofit, you're looking at those models, or if you're looking at charity, it's those models. However, not every model fits everything or every business. So it's about understanding what works for you and what works for 
your vision. Sometimes if you are creating a business that you want to scale and you want to sell at the end, that's a very different story than if you're creating something that you can manage right now just within your resources. So there's two different pathways and understanding what business model fits your skill set and your ability to drive it forth in the first five years is very important because that then informs how efficiently you can use the resources that you already have. However, if you're also looking at longer term goals and you're looking to offload a lot of this work to other people in the future, there are also other ways to systematize that. However, those are two different processes. And so you want to know what strategies and what courses or what what models you're doing at different stages or what strategies you're taking at different stages of your business. So the first stage, I'm trained in innovation from my master's degree as well as take my clients through these different innovation processes is using the design thinking process to be able to do that. Because what I see a lot is I see a lot of entrepreneurs, especially if you're using uh, services, they're using a lot of courses that have set strategies that they're following. And the challenge with that is that if you're following a formula that may not fit what you are creating, then you end up not getting the result that you want. That's a very simplified way of putting it. And So when you're considering which type of course, which type of strategy to take, make sure that that is something that fits you, that is something that fits the market, and that is something that fits your clients. All right, so the third thing about that is decision making. So a lot of what I see in decision makings for entrepreneurs or successful people who are going for the next level, Um, even if you're doing a side hustle and you're just just starting off with it, or you might be doing a couple already and this is not your first rodeo, is that your decision making is based upon your current comfort zone. Very rarely people step out of their comfort zone for certain decision makings that may lead to better results. And the thing is, when you're in your comfort zone, your ego mind and your brain that wants to keep you safe will not even let you see the other possibilities out there that might push you to the edge. And that might show up in resistances, and that might show up in in, in the fact that you might be even blind to those possibilities. A lot of my clients, when I challenge them to see what could have them reach their audience faster, put up all kinds of red flags to reach out to referral partners or to reach out to communities and, and, um, and people in their warm market or in their warm network that are already more than willing to be partners with them and instead would rather put their time and work on marketing on social media than to just make that call. And that is because there are sometimes resistances towards stepping out of your comfort zone to get the result that you want so that you can help more people. So when mission-driven entrepreneurs care so much about their mission and care so much about their people, sometimes what's challenging and what's going to get the result, maybe contacting the person who has the most reach of the people you can serve, is more confronting than to do something easier. And that's why you got to look at what is the, if I only had one day to accomplish my mission, what do I need to do right now? And take that action. It's out of comfort zone and it's the one that you got to get support in order to step through and take those massive actions instead of taking smaller, less uncomfortable pieces. Of course, it takes a lot of persistent action and a lot of believing in the vision without seeing the results to be able to get to a place of results. However, if you can 
take the uncomfortable action, take the uncomfortable action on a consistent basis, that will accelerate your growth much faster. So number three is making the decision based on what is the most effective decision despite stepping out of your comfort zone and having someone to actually show you the blind spots of your thinking. So the fourth part, just like we mentioned, is persistence. And that is another reason why passion-driven entrepreneurs fail because they are so in integrity and in, in full energy of their mission that sometimes it can be very personal and very emotionally draining or even emotionally heavy to be carrying all of that mission on one pair of shoulders. Although your community can support you, a lot of the times leaders and mission-driven successful uh, people, um, when they're taking that action towards their next mission or their next endeavor, feel very, very lonely. And the loneliness is not in the sense that you don't have any friends, but it's in the sense that nobody understands the type of challenges that you're facing and the type of how grueling it is to be able to create abundance and create the platform for your value to truly be delivered and received and accessed by the people that you're meant to serve. And I know this for a fact because for my first few years of entrepreneurship, it was incredibly difficult to be able to break out of a system and a place where the structures of success and pathways of career have or has already been laid out. There have been people who have gone through those paths. But when you're shooting in the dark and you're creating the structures in space, imagine like you're in this space of complete darkness. You don't even know what the tools are. Maybe you came with a couple pieces of skill set, but you're collecting the tools and building the pathway and constantly being thrown in these unknowns with things shifting constantly. It's very, very, very difficult to hold your emotions and persist and just take a step at a time to trust in yourself that this is actually going to pull through. The first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, year after year, day after day, to believe in what you have to offer is actually a value before the results comes, right? And so when you are a visionary and you see this vision and you want to see it through, the persistence is actually not as easy as it seems like a word um, and it shows up in a day-to-day -day place. So when you start realizing you're distracting yourself, you're being burnt out, you have no more energy, you're not motivated anymore, there is a chance that that energy has been sucked dry and that you got to look at what part of you needs to shift and what part of your business needs to realign to see what that is what's going to put more energy and more motivation in it again because mission-driven entrepreneurs and mission-driven successful entrepreneurs have the ability to reach into that sense of drive and intrinsic motivation and energy. So depression and the phenomenon of putting more work and more work and more work into it is a sign of that. Okay, the fifth one is about the energy. So we're just talking about that, right? So the energy when you're doing this. In your regular job, let's say you're you're shifting your way of working or you're in corporate or you're in a regular job and you're wanting to start something new. In your regular job, there's a lot about achievement and a lot about working really hard to get the results that you want. And that is incredibly important when you are working towards your 
personal goals as well as your mission driven goals as well. However, there are different things that you actually need to change so that you're not just replicating a model of work freaking hard and burn yourself out at the expense of your health and your well-being to be able to sustain and to make progress on your business because your business and your mission-driven passion-driven business is actually a reflection of your own health as well. So your health is just as important as the business progress itself. And in that case, a lot of stuff needs to be broken in the way that you view things, in the way that you're habitually programmed to work, and in the way that society has dictated what success means, what patterns of behavior means progress in your own world and and how that influences you how that all needs to break in order for you to re-identify and redefine what it means to actually be sustainable energetically emotionally spiritually physically psychologically in your business and that is super important and that's the energy management of this part and so what how are you supporting yourself in all of these areas so that you can ensure that you don't burn out in any of these areas and that is something that i found is super duper important and takes incredible amounts of self-care attention consciousness awareness so that you can persist on this really really long and rewarding and meaningful journey and the last two points is well the sixth point is support right so because If you are not an expert in all of these areas of psychological support, emotional support for yourself, physical support, health support, and all of these, and business support and and strategic support, if you're not an expert in these, how are you going to get that? So the sixth reason why people fail is that they just ignore it and they just think that all right like this is my mission and i gotta do that and i'm just gonna take care of maybe my gym i'll have my gym thing set up maybe i'll have a healer or a massage every one now and then however like you gotta have a space and time where you reevaluate and you evaluate all of those areas or have at least someone or a group of people to overlook that with you so that you know that you're taking care in all of these other areas it's just like maintaining a car right you guys send it to maintenance or it's like cultivating a new practice um, of let's say learning a piano if you don't have a teacher to kind of show you which areas um, you're you can improve in or correct some of these inefficient parts of playing or tell you and share with you perspectives of hey there's a rhythm here or there's a skill here or there's this way of moving your fingers that could be more efficient then you will never know and there is actually a way of doing it and being a a more resourced calm effective and empowered human being to be able to embody this entrepreneur and the successful person that you are when you're in this world and so that is one thing so who are you and who you be is way 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 important and way more important and what than what tasks you accomplish because the tasks only go this far but who you become as a result of success or as a prerequisite of success is what actually leads to it so what are you investing in and are you investing in to be able to cultivate that way of being inside of you so that you are able to get there all right and the last one is sabotaging so if you're a high achiever and you have had success before you know that there are many behaviors in your subconscious mind which exist that you may or may not be aware of that oftentimes sabotage your successes and it could be a successful project or a different 
uh, or success in getting what you want from a relational perspective or clients or, or just a milestone. And so knowing what those patterns are and deleting those with effective tools is going to be able to support you. And there are so many more things I want to share, but we are really, really over time. So this is Hani. I'm Hani. I talk about how to support you as a person as you create more successes in your life by optimizing your human workings on the inside. And I have so much more to share. So definitely comment below what insight you have. One insight can change the entire direction and reinvigorate you. So what's your one insight and one action that you want to take? And I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you soon.